Well, I have just been really inspired by some YouTubers out there that make fairy jars and one in particular is Crafty Wings and I'll link her channel down below. I've got a couple of nieces that would absolutely love this. So I have got a couple of these plastic jars. Now I'm just going to do one today. But what I wanted to do is use this plastic jar because it's not breakable um, and they are probably around five. So you, I don't want to use a glass jar um, and have it um, have them break it and then cut themselves. So this used to hold a heap of lollies. I think my son um, had it and uh, threw it away and then I rescued it. So I've given it a really good clean. Um, I do have some Spellbinders fairies here. So I've got a couple of fairies which I am going to use. Uh, I've got another fairy here that I'm going to add as well and this one was from AliExpress. So I'm going to uh, use that. I am going to also use some butterflies because I associate fairies with butterflies, as you do. <laughs> and I've got this stamp set that just came in from AliExpress uh, along with, I'll just show you this one here, this one. And it's got really small ones and that's what I want. So I've got that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this out on some tissue paper okay so this tissue paper here um, I have because it's nice and flat uh, and I just put it in you know like a cardboard thing that I've made I've also got a heap of dies that I may or may not use so I was going through them this morning now I may use that for the top of the container just like some ivy something hanging down I thought uh, some flowers sticking up so I've got some flowers I'm not sure if I'm going to use them all but I thought I would just um, pull them out and if I do great I've got a dragonfly yeah so if I do use them great but if I don't that's okay so I've got some dye butterflies as well uh, some flowers, some flowers. I've got some grass which I'm going to use as well and I've got some mushrooms which I thought would be really good on the bottom. So uh, I also have some tissue paper. Okay so I'm just using white tissue paper. I'm going to use Mod Podge matte this morning uh, to do this as well so I hope you find it as inspirational as what I found and I do hope you enjoy my process video so let's get started so first of all I'm going to stamp all my butterflies out using some VersaFine black onyx ink I will color these in also using my distress markers Now I don't have any black paper but I'm going to improvise here and I'm painting some acrylic black paint onto some photocopy paper and I'm going to do this back and front. So this is what I will use to cut out my images for the jar. So once my paper is completely dry I'll die cut out all my elements using my die cutting machine.
I found using the painted paper, uh, it was a little bit harder to get out of the dies, but I don't want a thick card because these will actually be glued on the outside of my jars. So now to the fun part of gluing all the elements to the outside of the jar. I'm going to start off with the grass and what I had to do was I had to cut little slits in the bottom of the grass because the bottom of my jar curved in a little bit. So I'll fix that up towards the end but I'm just going to just insert some slits into the grass. So I'm going to also start putting the ivy hanging from the top of the jar. This will help me centre some of the fairies and elements uh, onto the front of the jar as well. So as you can see, by putting the slits in the bottom of the grass will help the paper mould around the bottom curvature of this jar. So after colouring all these butterflies, in the end I decided not to use these as I thought they would be too much uh, on the jar. I can use these on another project so I will put these away. So I'm just going to paint the bottom of the jar just with black acrylic paint just to cover up that empty space. Now to the fun part, I'm going to get my tissue paper and I'm going to glue this onto the outside over my elements that I've just glued. So I'm going to use the Mod Podge mat just with a paintbrush. I'm going to apply it straight onto the jar and lay the tissue paper over it. I'll also just use just a touch of water on my paintbrush just to help the tissue paper to stick to the Mod Podge. Now as you can see the tissue paper will form some wrinkles. I'm not really too worried about that because I think that'll give some texture and element to this jar. So I also had a little accident where I ripped some of the tissue paper, but not to worry, I can repair that just with some tissue paper, which I'm doing here.
So I did leave my jar to dry overnight naturally. I didn't want to use a heat gun because if I used a heat gun to dry the tissue paper, chances are the plastic container would warp and buckle. But the following day, I decided to paint my jar on the outside over the tissue paper with some acrylic paint. So the paint I used on the grass was just a Semco paint and I used bright green and early spring green. So by doing the two uh, different coloured greens will give a bit of dimension to the grass on the bottom of my jar. I did colour some of the other elements in and with those I actually used DecoArt acrylic metallic paint in various colours. point I was working on both of my jars at once so it's easier to colour in two jars than having to do one jar at a time and this was so much fun I tell you it was so good and I was just so pleased with the effect that it did give. A list of all supplies that I have used will also be linked over on my website as well, which I'll link that down in the description box below. hardest part of this painting bit was the ivory. It did go over the edges but I wasn't too worried about that because when the fairy lights are on at night it will have that little bit of a green tinge to the ivory.
Now at this point as well, I did use a bit of festive green deco art acrylic metallic paint on the grass. So it's a bit of a goldy green color and I just thought that it needed just a little bit more dimension to the grass. I'm also adding just a touch of this to the leaves of my flowers. So I've got this burlap twine that I purchased from AliExpress and I'm just going to wind it around underneath the lip of where the lid goes and I'm just going to glue that in place just to give it a little bit of a rustic look. So I'm going to cover my lid up to both of the fairy jars that I'm currently working on and I'm going to use some Kayser Craft paper from the Always and Forever collection. This paper here that I'm using is called Promise and it's a double sided paper. So one side it's burlap and the other side it's like a dusty pink with some creamy polka dots. Now I am adding cut slits all around the edge of my paper here because when I glue this in place the paper will sit a little bit better and I'm just going to use some Mod Podge mat just to glue my paper down in place. So I did cut a centimetre strip of the burlap side of the paper just so it was contrasting and this will go on the edge of my lid. Now I did raid the peg basket because I'm using the pegs to hold my strip into place while the glue dries. So once my strip dried, I wanted to use this ribbon to go around the burlap side here. So I'm just using a multi-medium mat just to hold my ribbon into place. I bought this ribbon from AliExpress, so once again that will be in my list of supplies which will be over on my website. What's a fairy garden without charm? So I've got some charms here and I purchased a lot of these from AliExpress from various suppliers. If you do type metal charms into the search toolbar on the AliExpress, it lists a wide range of suppliers that supply these. So I've just got some burlap twine here and I've used a jump ring to put the charms on and I've threaded it through the burlap. So I'm just going to finish off the lid by die cutting some flowers and ferns out of different coloured cardstock here. Now I have got this, I think it's an icing tool um, and you use it just to weaken the fibres in the paper. It's really a useful tool and I got this AliExpress and it was a set of four and it was fairly cheap. So I've put everything together and as you can see it is just such a delight. I finished my fairy jar and it's absolutely gorgeous. I know the two girls that are going to get this are going to love them. So the last thing that I did was purchase some fairy lights from my local Kmart store and they came in a 3 metre length and they take AA batteries and I paid $5 for them so pretty cheap. 
So I've popped them in my jar and it's just so magical. I just love it. But I know that the two girls that will be getting this will absolutely love it also. So I hope you've enjoyed my process video on this. If you have, please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And don't forget that notification bell. And until next time, happy crafting. See ya.